Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosy UK. Today I'm showing you how to make this jam jar cover. So this is quite a small jar, but you can add an extra couple of rows, um, pop some fairy lights in, um, so you can do them all different heights and sizes as well. What's really useful is the larger size actually sits over like a Coke can, so you can use it as a can cozy as well, which makes it double purpose. So the materials that you're going to need today are going to be said jam jar. Get it all cleaned, get all the sticky stuff off um, and get it ready to use. I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook and I've got four different shades. This is kind of scrap yarn really. I've got little bits left over of, um, of DK weight or Aran weight, no sorry, DK weight yarn. Um, four millimeter crochet hook, pair of scissors, and a dying needle to weave in all the pesky ends because there are quite a few of those because we're going to change colour in every single row. So grab all your materials and let's get started. So I'm going to start with my first colour. I've chosen the dark colour first and I'm just going to start by making a slip knot and popping that onto my hook. Tightening that to my hook there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to chain four. We're going to then slip stitch into that first chain that we made and then chain three. So this first chain three counts as our first treble crochet in our first round. We're then going to work into the center of this ring that we created. So not underneath the, uh, the slip stitch, but just underneath there, there is another hole. So just yarn over the hook and then insert into the middle. I'm gonna place my tail yarn just around this ring so that I can cinch that in after we've worked this round. So yarn over, bring a loop back through the center of that ring. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So we've now got two. We're looking for a total of 12 treble crochets. So we need to make a further 10 treble crochets into the same center that we've already started to work. So that's three, four, and five, Still working over my tail yarn as well. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and number twelve. I'm going to double check, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we're then going to slip stitch to the top of our chain three. So by going through the middle of that chain there, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. So that finishes round one. I've got a total of um, the chain three and 11 treble crochets. If I pull on that tail yarn, it just makes that center disappear a little bit. So going into round two, we're going to chain three, which again counts as our first treble. We're then going to work another treble crochet into that same space that we did the chain three. We're going to place two treble crochets into each stitch around working into the top of each stitch I'm going to place two treble crochets. So this will take our starting stitch count of, 20, of 12 all the way up to 24. So we're increasing into each stitch around. So keep placing two treble crochets into each stitch and I'll meet you at the end of this round two.
So I've reached the end of my second round. So I've got, I've just double checked my stitch count and I've got a total of 24 stitches all along. We're just gonna slip stitch to the top of um, the chain three that we did first of all, just by yarning over, pull through and straight through. And I'm just gonna do a quick chain one just to create a little knot. And then I'm going to snip my yarn, leaving enough to ensure that I can weave these tail ends in at the end. So going into round three, I'm going to take my next colour, which in my case is this kind of fuchsia pink, and we need to attach it between a pair. So where we've gone into two stitches in, um, sorry, gone into a stitch and placed two treble crochets, we're going to go in between these pairs. So I'm going to go in here, it doesn't matter where you do it, and I'm just going to slip stitch my yarn on. So just bring that back through, making sure that you're in the space between the pair and just pull that through. Again, I'm going to lay my tail ends down so I can try and weave them in a little bit, save myself a job at the end. So we're going to chain three, which again counts as our first treble crochet. We're going to place another two treble crochets into the same space. That's number one. And number two. We're then going to work in between the next pair. So where we've got two treble crochets in one stitch, we're going to go in between those two. And we're going to place, well work, three treble crochets in between each pair from the previous round. So again, we're increasing the stitch count. So it should lay nice and flat after this round. So literally just three treble crochets into each of these pairs all the way around. So keep placing those and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Uh, last, uh, where well, I just need to place my last treble uh, crochet cluster in this space here. I'm going to show you how I fasten this row off. So I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three just to join that round. And then I'm just going to slip stitch across the top of the next two treble crochets and into that um, chain, well, the treble cluster space. Do a quick chain one, snip my yarn, and then just pull through. Because what we're going to do is we're going to rejoin the yarn for round three, just, oh, sorry, round four, just in here. So I'm going to place my hook in there, grab my next colour. In my case, this is a baby pink. I'm just going to join over where I've finished, just with a slip stitch. Then I'm going to chain three. And do a further two treble crochets in that chain space. Sorry, it's not a chain space, it's a cluster space. Make sure that we've covered all of that up. And we're going to work another three treble crochets into that next space. And we're going to place three treble crochets into in between each space all the way around. So I'll meet you oops, at the end here. I'm just finishing off these last, that last three treble cluster, treble three cluster even ready to slip stitch just to the top of this chain three here. I'm going to slip stitch and then slip stitch across the top of these three, these other two trebles as well. Do a little chain one and then make sure I snip my yarn leaving sufficient to weave in a little bit later. So already you'll start to see 
ignoring all the ends, and it's starting to curve up. So we're going to keep adding different colours in different rows. So my next colour is going to be this lovely bright white. So I'm going to join that and repeat this pattern up until the top of my jar. Well, not quite, up until the rim of my jar here. So it's going to be about, let's have a little look. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 rows until you're reaching the top of your jar. Um, and I will meet you back when you finish those 10 rows, ready to add on a little border at the top. Okay, so keep working and adding a different colour. Change colours each row if you want to, or do it all in one colour. Um, and I will see you after row, you've got 10 rows of the treble three clusters. So I've just finished my 10th round of uh, treble three clusters. I've got my slightly large jam jar here. So I'm just going to try this on and just check that it reaches where the jar starts to decrease. Because what we're going to do now is a round that's going to bring the cover in. Obviously, because it's acrylic yarn, it's got a nice stretch to it. So it will be quite fitted. And we want it to stretch a little bit up because we want to be able to see through if we're going to put shiny lights inside. So what we're going to do is actually rejoin the yarn. This time we're not going to go in between the treble three clusters. We're going to go into the stitch itself. So I'm just going to insert my hook where I just fastened off. I'm changing colours again. So I'm going for my second colour. And I'm just going to start by slip stitching that into place. And then I'm going to place a half treble into the same space that I just slip stitched into. So I'm going to yarn over the hook, insert it back in to that space, yarn over, bring up a loop. So I've got those three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Place, so again, we're not working into that space in between, we're working into the next stitch to put another half treble crochet. And then we're going to do a half treble crochet two together. So we're going to bring these two stitches into one. So we yarn over the hook, insert the hook into that next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up. We're going to yarn over but just go through the first two loops, yarn over the hook, insert it into the next stitch, yarn over. So we've got four loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on our hook. And that brings those two stitches into one. So that's the pattern for this round. We're going to be doing two half treble crochets, followed by a half treble two together. So yarn over, insert, bring that loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over, bring that loop up so we have four on our hook, yarn over and pull through all four. Place two further treble crochets into the next two stitches and then do another decrease. We're going to repeat that the whole way across so that we can decrease our stitches, our stitch count, and we'll see how it brings in the the top part of the jam jar cover. Round this one. Yeah, I've got had three stitches remaining. Oh no, one more decrease. There we go. Perfect. 
So we're just going to slip stitch to the top of that first stitch that we made. And again, just fasten that off. And you can see, I'm going to tuck that in because all my ends are in there, look lovely. Um, you can see it just brings the top of the jam jar, the jam jar, the cover in just ever so slightly, but it's got a good stretch to it. So I'm going to place one more round um, just so it will take it up to the top of our uh, jam jar itself. Just going to get my other colour. Oops. And again, I'm going to rejoin where I just fastened off, just so I can weave those ends in, less to sew up. So let's just join with a slip stitch. And that's our chain one. We're going to place a, oh, a half treble crochet into that first stitch. I'm going to work over my tail ends as I go and literally this round you simply place a half treble crochet into each stitch around so this is a nice easy one there we go there we go tuck those in I will sort them out at some point don't worry So just literally half treble crochet into each stitch around. The slightly smaller stitch than the treble, obviously, it's half the size, um, but it just kind of makes it a little bit different. You can see the contrast between the stitch heights as well, which makes the granny stripe just kind of pop just a little bit more. These jam jars were designed, or the cover was designed um, to go with my um, run rings around granny teapot cover and uh, the coasters that match it as well. Uh, I've done them all in the same colour because I, I'm quite a matchy matchy person but it looks like such a kitsch design I really really like them so I'll share a photo with you at the end of everything all together. One thing I would say is um, to make sure that you're not going to be using actual candles in your jars. Glass gets incredibly hot when it's near a naked flame, uh, so that is incredibly dangerous. Um, I use LED lights in my jam jars um, that are battery operated. Just working these last few stitches. So rather than slip stitching on this final round, what I'm going to do is to show you how to do the invisible join to make a seamless join. We could do our normal slip stitch, but it's going to leave us with that knot to deal with. And I am not interested in that. Wah, wah, wah. So instead, what we're going to do is work those final few stitches. When you've worked your last stitch, you're going to cut your tail yarn and pull the loop up back out all the way out of that stitch and we're just going to thread this onto our needle here and what we're going to do I'll do it left-handed for you so keep out of your way we're going to go under both loops of that first stitch that we made just like that no I've done that the wrong way so we're going to go through and under both of those stitches from front to back and just draw that closed and then we're going to insert the needle in the back loop of the last stitch that we worked and ta-da! It's an invisible join. You cannot see, apart from the tail yarn sticking out, which stitch we finished with. We're going to just very loosely weave that through there just for a moment just so we can try this on. So I've made the larger size. So I've got my jam jar. Let's put that on. It's going to be go on nice and easily. Oops, squeaky, squeaky. There we go. So 
fits perfectly. Now I'm going to pop um, some inside use only uh, battery operated lights in. Now the reason I haven't covered this section here is because I will leave these outside, but I'm going to attach my screw top to it so it stops the water getting in so they can stay outside if I wanted to without risk of damaging the batteries or the lights. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Obviously go on and weave all your ends in again. It's my favourite job, I'm not going to lie. Um, and then I, wish, I would love for you to show me your completed projects. Uh, you can put, obviously put different coloured lights in as well. These are these wonderfully expensive LEDs. Um, yeah, tag me in a photo on your social media as well. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to find even more exciting free crochet patterns and of course lots of different stitch tutorials as well. So thank you very much for joining me today. I would love to see your finished projects. So do, don't forget to tag me in those.